Hey, it is Rachel. Every single growing season, it seems like I come up with a new way to kill my seedlings. The only upside is that I get to document these failures and share them with you all so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. I'm gonna do that today, and the topic is fungus gnat infestations, specifically of their larvae. I'm gonna talk about why these guys suck, what you can do to spot an infestation and deal with it quickly, and then most importantly, how to prevent them in the first place, and that's what I wish I had done. And it is what I'm gonna do every season going forward. Fungus gnats are small little gnats, about the size of a fruit fly, that feed on fungus, hence the name. They are attracted to damp soil, lay their eggs on the surface, and when those hatch, they burrow through the soil, they eat the fungus on the surface, and then eventually, they start eating the roots of your plants. This is why they are evil. This manifested for me pretty suddenly. I had a lot of healthy looking seedlings, pretty sizable, you know, kind of like this big. You can see this was one of the victims. Healthy, sizable seedlings suddenly got wilty and nothing that I did seemed to make a difference. Eventually, many of them did die. I was really frustrated. When I poured out the potting soil from the grow bags, I discovered these little wiggly white maggot looking things once I got through my case of severe icks, after seeing that, I started researching what they could be, and I discovered that these are the fungus gnat larvae, and realized that them feasting on my plant roots had been the cause of all of my problems. The hard part is, once you have them in your soil, they are buried deep around the root structure. You can't simply yank the plants out and replace the whole thing with new soil, especially because there are potentially hundreds more eggs in that same soil just waiting to hatch. What I did, was two of the most commonly recommended remedies. The first day I used hydrogen peroxide. I deleted that one part hydrogen peroxide with two parts water. I then used that as a soil drench and thoroughly wetted the soil. This kills the larvae on contact. Just to be safe, I then the following day used the second remedy that I saw recommended often, and that was to use neem oil. Neem oil is an insecticide and also kills those larvae. This is an oil and doesn't naturally dissolve in water to form a soil drench. I used Castile soap, unscented, two tablespoons Castile soap, followed by three tablespoons of neem oil, and then I added six cups of water. This was just the amount that fit in my particular water pitcher. And then much like the day before, I did a thorough drench of the soil with the neem oil mixture. It's worth noting, I not only treated the plants that showed signs of this affliction, I treated all of the plants in my greenhouse. I wanted to make sure that if there were any more of these critters about to hatch or recently hatched, that I would kill them too. I was not able to save all of them. I did have still a lot of goners, but some of them that I gave this treatment have started to perk back up, and you can see there's a little bit of new perky green growth at the tips of the plants. And the fact that they haven't completely collapsed tells me that there might be hope for these ones. That is treatment. Let's quickly talk about prevention. What I wish I had done in the first place. Few things. One, don't overwater your plants. Uh, in my case, this kicked in right after I had gone on vacation for the weekend and I had watered the plants pretty thoroughly before leaving. That I think contributed to the problem. The best way to avoid that other than not overwatering is to run an oscillating fan in your enclosed space to help dry the leaves out, dry off the surface of the soil. I used to do this all the time. Candidly, it's a best practice. I just got lazy and stopped doing. You should have an oscillating fan. It not only helps prevent overly damp conditions, but it also helps to strengthen the seedling stems as they're periodically stimulated by that moving air. I have brought my fan back in. You can kind of see it there behind me. So that is going to live in my greenhouse from this point forward and help prevent overly damp conditions. The other two preventative measures that I intend to take going forward are to mix a dose of diatomaceous earth into my potting mixture that I use to start my seedlings. That creates microscopic razor sharp cutting edges that will kill the larvae when they hatch, if they hatch in the soil. The second preventative measure is to periodically give your plants a dose of one of these killing methods, either hydrogen peroxide or neem oil. I don't personally like the smell of neem oil very much. My plan is to use the hydrogen peroxide soil drench. Hydrogen peroxide is really cheap at the drugstore. It's less expensive than neem oil. I can easily give it to the plants. And it almost seemed like for the plants that weren't affected by this, they kind of enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if the oxygenation of the soil made a difference or not, 
I had worried that it would be a little rough on the plants and quite the opposite. It was almost like they got a spa treatment or something. And hence my plan going forward is to use this treatment once a week on all of my seedlings and really help to prevent an outbreak of fungus gnats again. It was incredibly frustrating to lose this many seedlings. But I did learn something and going forward, I at least now know that when my plants start to droop a little bit like this, I should probably get on the offensive and assume I have a fungus gnat infestation. That is the latest chapter in Rachel Makes All the Mistakes so that you don't have to. Um, I hope this one was helpful. I'd love it if somebody benefited from this. All I got out of it was a bunch of dead seedlings and frustration, but I hope that it will have the silver lining of preventing this for other people out there starting their gardens. Thanks.